This is World Beer News. Details on how you can be involved. Contact news at Tasty Niche. So welcome to World Beer News. I'm your host, Niche, and today we're going to be talking how Trump is going to affect beer geeks. Uh, no World Beer News this week. I didn't get a lot of sleep because I was watching the presidential election. Do I look haggard? But we'll get back on a regular schedule with that, and I have some ideas as well to make it even more interactive with you. Uh, and I appreciate people that have been sending me stories and volunteering their time to be part of World Beer News. This week, I just want to um, respond to, obviously, the presidential election in the United States of America. So grab a beer, buckle up. The next 10 minutes, we're just gonna go over two things. How his presidency will affect beer culture and how it will affect the beer market. Those are my fears. Like, here's what I'm afraid of as a beer geek. Let me be honest, uh, I panicked a little bit for uh, the American citizens. My initial assumption was that uh, we were heading for another prohibition. Um, Donald Trump abstains from drug use, or uh, at least he's never been seen drinking or using any kind of intoxicants. Um, unlike George W. Bush, who said uh, his faith healed him and brought him to a life of abstention. Uh, Donald, on the other hand, um, was clearly traumatized by the death of his older brother, Fred, uh, from alcoholism. And this death by alcoholism, I think, is the signature tragedy of Donald's early life. But the lesson that he took away from it was that Fred was weak, he couldn't manage himself, and don't drink and don't do drugs. Well, first of all, Fred was a great guy, but you know, he had an alcohol yeah. problem, okay? And he was such an amazing guy, and the best personality, best looking guy you'll ever see, and you know, he had a lot of things, but he had an alcohol problem. And it's one of the things I tell people, I mean, it just destroys people. You know, if you're going to put lessons, you might as well, yeah. to me it's such a big lesson, because alcohol and drugs, people come to me about their kids, oh, where should they go? I said, look, just make sure they don't drink and they don't take drugs. And stay away from the tattoos if possible. But, you know, at least there wasn't any examination of why did he need to drink? Uh, why was he vulnerable to alcoholism? It's not even a trait that really runs through the family. It's, it's not the kind of thing where you would say, well, this was a predisposition. I think that he drank to escape, and I think he was escaping something in the Trump family. But to think about that and examine it is unacceptable to Donald. For him that he doesn't drink or those really around him and yet he hosts these parties in which uh, drinks and drugs have been known to be served he understands that um, socially and uh, for business reasons taking advantage or even fostering the use of intoxicants is beneficial for him so prohibition don't worry not gonna happen but what will happen is a reduction in prestige. Uh, the White House Brewery. We are in the White House kitchen, and we are very excited because we are brewing our second round of, of White House beer. And then from there, into the refrigerator, and then it's ready for consumption. The only thing you have left to do is just put the labels on and pop the top. So we're very proud of our, of our new tradition here, and uh, we hope it lasts for years to come. I presume he will close that. Um, Barack Obama did a lot of work to legitimize beer uh, because he made it part of the, the presidential job. Uh, he repositioned beer as something responsible. Uh, Obama flipped George W. Bush's uh, Healed by God, so I no longer drink into uh, responsible use is an important part of a well-rounded American citizen. Uh, that's going to be less important. Um, Hopefully less important is as far as it goes and alcohol doesn't become stigmatized. That being said, let's take a look at um, how the Trump presidency will affect the beer market. I'm not an economist. <laughs> um, so from a beer geek standpoint, here are the three big things. Um, we've got the big players, like what are they up to and how's that gonna affect them? We've got the indie brewers, indie brewers and also um, our precious white whales. AB Ambev, um, America, beer. Yeah, right, that was a response to Trump. Brilliant. AB Ambev didn't take sides. They chose to side with the American public, and that was smart. Um, but they also clearly have an interest in political systems. Even though they seem like a company that would be in bed with uh, Trump as a, as a big donor, um, you know, their vicious multinational conglomerate style. I think he'd be into that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to say that Trump isn't interested in them. 
from what I've seen, he's disconnected from modern business. Uh, point being that his business alliances are not natural, so don't expect him just to be jumping in bed with someone like ABMF. Okay, so but these large companies don't really have anything to fear from Trump. But then does that mean that independent brewers do? Niche? Is that what you're saying? Well, um, let's play a game. Let's say the beer market is this cookie. Everyone wants a piece of the cookie. Uh, generally speaking, bigger uh, companies get bigger pieces of the cookie because they have more resources, okay? I am ABM Bev. <laughs> Joe Schmo Brewing, I get like. If his protectionist policies are put into effect, um, there is gonna be a bigger piece of the cookie available for independent brewers. Um, Trump wants local American business to have more of the cookie versus multinationals, right? If you believe uh, liberal economists like um, Paul Krugman, you, huh? Then uh, a terrible thing has just happened. Hmm. As like still kind of vaguely outlined by uh, Trump, buy-in is going to be more difficult, at a detriment to the in independent brewer. To change access to the pieces of the cookie um, is going to cause the whole according to these liberal economists, it's gonna make the whole cookie world factory uh, just get smaller. Paul Krugman said in his lovely uh, piece, the world will never recover. So the cookie factory basically has been moved to the slums and uh, the economy broke your legs. So sure, you could maybe afford to have a piece of the cookie. <laughs> if only you could get there. Yeah. Let's move on from economy and just like talk about what matters. Uh, white whales and um, Another geek point like this is gonna be this is okay. It's gonna reduce access to international white whales in the United States of America um, This you should panic about a little bit right um, the Trump policy is fine with exporting but importing or even moving products around in North America so like Canada and Mexico uh, that market is gonna be expensive and definitely gonna change very quickly. So your Vestavitin 12, uh, Cantillon, those fancy Japanese whiskeys, those are gonna be gone. I mean, not gone, but expensive. So you can just forget about the international section of your bottle shop, um, which may not be important for most of you because you probably have delicious beer anyway. It's fine. Trump is kind of a hipster in that way. He wants you just to keep it local. So, how is the Donald Trump presidency going to change your beer geek life? Well, you know what? We don't freaking know. We don't know. And um, that's what's scary. That's why people get angry and they lash out when they're scared. Uh, beer has survived through prohibition. Um, it has grown to this prestigious level, creating a wonderful network of enlightened uh, consumers, um, some of with, which just like want to express their views through a beer label, like this defines me, and other people just want to have delicious tasting things and, and not care about how the business practice behind getting that thing into their body. Uh, what brings us together is, is knowing that beer is good, even if we may not be. So, Cheers to beer, hmm? In whatever style, with whatever affiliation, you know. I'm Niche, your beer geek friend. And I'm here. Merci. Au revoir. I'm gonna be honest. I'm excited. Trump presidency is gonna be so interesting. Okay? Take a deep breath if you're opposed to Trump. Take a deep breath. If you're for Trump, beer is a catalyst for conversation. We don't judge people. We don't preach. Okay? Keep that in mind.